Magenta Canada and CNM Seeds present the Wheat School on RealAgriculture.com. Okay, so there's a lot of people starting to use double nozzles now, and I guess it's been said that with a double nozzle, maybe you don't need as much water volume, or the droplet sizes and numbers change. Yeah, that's a really good question. I think what, what's happening is that people are using double nozzles under the impression that they will also double the number of droplets. You have two, you know, one nozzle, a certain number of droplets, and then two nozzles, you have more droplets. And uh, that's actually false. Uh, the, the unstated assumption behind that is that uh, droplets are getting smaller when you can use, use two nozzles instead of one. So if the droplet size did not change, and that's entirely possible with double nozzles, with all the choices of air induction nozzles that we have, you can take a single nozzle and have a certain droplet size, and then you can use a double nozzle with two air induction nozzles and actually have an even coarser droplet size, even though there's two nozzles there. In that case, with a double nozzle, the number of droplets would actually be reduced. But the more common situation is that you have a certain air induction nozzle, a single nozzle, and then you use two smaller ones of that same type of nozzle in a double setup. In that case, because smaller flow rate nozzles produce finer drops, the double nozzle does produce a finer spray. And as, as a result of that, the double nozzle does give us uh, more droplets. But it has more to do with the individual nozzle than the number. That's right. It has more to do with the droplet size that comes out of that nozzle as opposed to the number of nozzles. Okay. Mm -hmm. If it was true that more nozzles give you more droplets, I would be spraying with five nozzles, for example, to get the maximum number of droplets. But when you have to divide your flow up into smaller nozzles, there's less flow out of each. There might be finer drops and therefore more drops out of a, you know, per volume, but it's the volume is also smaller. So the actual number of drops isn't uh, necessarily affected. So um, it is true then that uh, if a double nozzle makes a finer spray, there are more droplets in that, in that double nozzle. But if the double nozzle does not change the spray quality, there are no changes in the droplet number. So that's important to remember. Uh, if you want more droplets, the best way to do it is by making the spray finer. And it doesn't matter to me how you make it finer. You can choose a different nozzle that is inherently finer. You can increase your spray pressure. Every nozzle, all nozzles get finer with higher spray pressure. Or you can divide the flow of that one nozzle into two smaller nozzles, and smaller nozzles also have typically finer sprays. Um, it's not necessary to go to a double nozzle to have a finer spray. So if we're going from a single to a double nozzle of the same type, is there anything that we need to change in, in the tractor? Probably not. I think it's still important to operate the nozzles at the pressures that they're intended to be operated at. So if you have a certain air induction nozzle, the typical pressure range for that nozzle is between somewhere around 30 or 40 psi as a minimum pressure to somewhere around 100 psi as a maximum pressure. And it doesn't really matter what flow rate that nozzle is, those pressure limits are still the same and I always recommend that the nozzle be operated somewhere in the middle of that range. So. Uh, maybe 70 or 60 psi. Now, as, you know, as the nozzles are smaller, the, the requirement might not be as strict for going to high pressures, uh, but the, you know, they should still be operated at, the, at a similar pressure. And water volume should stay the same? Water is probably the most, uh, you know, the, the, the best way to assure a quality job for most of our agricultural chemicals. Um, we advocate that appropriate water volumes be used, and it's, I know that's a very soft statement. We usually, you know, the labels usually talk about, uh, you know, provide enough water for adequate coverage or thorough coverage, and what exactly does that mean? Um, basically, you have to look at where your target is, and you have to look at, at uh, how deep in the canopy that target is. You have to look at the kind of canopy that you have. And the, the rule of thumb is the denser your canopy and the deeper into which you need to go into that canopy the more water is necessary to do that job. Um, it's just a, a game of attrition. The, the, the top third of the canopy captures the majority of the spray. You want more to go down below, you need a little bit more spray. There are really, I believe, there are two main reasons for using a double nozzle. The first one we just talked about, and that is it's actually a tool for making the spray somewhat finer at any given flow rate. Typically, fungicides are applied at higher flow rates, so we use larger nozzles. Some of those large nozzles become simply too coarse. You know, and so by splitting that into two smaller nozzles, we get that finer spray back or that intermediate spray quality back that we actually want it to have. So that's a very powerful tool. Um, 
And the other reason for using double nozzles is so that you get this angle of attack. Now, the angle of attack is only effective if the droplets are actually relatively coarse. The fine sprays that we might actually make uh, are very quickly deflected by wind. Uh, they're overtaken by travel speed and gravity and the other forces that affect droplets. So if we go to a double nozzle and we make it fairly fine, probably the canopy won't see that as a double nozzle. The canopy won't say, oh, this droplet's coming from this side and it's the other one's coming from that side. That won't happen. By the time it reaches the canopy, it'll be a general cloud depositing by wind and gravity. So to take advantage of that design feature, we do have to lower our boom and get as close to the canopy as possible so that the direction is still maintained. And secondly, use a slightly coarser spray to try to uh, get the um, uh, sort of the, the direction to last a little bit longer. Big drops tend to retain their direction longer than small drops. It's really a, ga a game of just a few centimeters, believe it or not, before the deflection starts to happen. Mm -hmm.